So what we are going to be focusing on today is dealing with our tablet as well as pressure sensitivity. What we want to be focusing on a lot today, especially for brand new users, is just the settings in Illustrator. So notice that I'm going to be dealing with the blob brush and the ones that we're going to focus on the most are going to be that keep selected. I want that turned off. I want my merge only with selection turned on. The next one is under that fidelity. Notice that my smoothing is pretty high. That's going to prevent you guys from having to do control Z nonstop. So just have it up nice and smooth and then Illustrator will do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. And then the only little thing that you're going to notice on the bottom is I have a three point size. This is where we are adding in our pressure. And then notice that if we are, most people when they are talking about pressure sensitivity, they are talking about the variation. So have that variation. So I'm just gonna click on okay. And what I wanna do before we get going, is I just want to compare previous tutorials with what we're about to do. We're just skipping over all of the initial things, but we're gonna get ugly really, really quick and there's still going to be overlapping and we're just going to be able to edit on the fly so it's going to feel very similar for those that have gone through any of our other step-by-step -step tutorials so if you're brand new we're going to go ugly really really fast so let's have some fun all right so the first little personal preference you're going to want to find out is how zoomed in you want to be so just zoom on in i personally like to be a little bit farther out and i also like to keep my brush work pretty small so my hand isn't really going all the way across the the tablet itself so a little things first let's just go shift B that is our blob brush now some of you might be asking can I use the brush or the paint brush and do the exact same thing and my initial answer is going to be a pretty abrupt no so everything that we are about to do you're gonna notice pretty quick isn't necessarily gonna play out the same way you're more than welcome to give it a test, but I am gonna recommend just kind of following along. And again, this is my preferred method. So we'll go all the way through it. So this right here, let's just zoom in and we're gonna edit on the fly going all the way around so you can kind of just see the method behind the madness here. Now, many of you, again, if you've gone through any of our other tutorials, this is gonna look eerily similar. So we have, this is gonna be at the end in almost every single one of our inking demonstrations. So I've got a bunch of overlapping. It looks hideous. Notice that everything is in a shape form, so I can still come through, I can still modify. If I wanted to adjust, I'd still be able to kind of position things around. So I, I like the flexibility of that. What we are gonna be doing is I'm just gonna be selecting everything. I'm gonna come in over to our shape builder. I am holding down my Alt option. And the bigger the areas, the easier the cleanup as always. And I just come through I click up all my stuff and then everything is nice and clean. So that is our process. So we're just gonna keep on going through. Again, what we are working on is how far out you wanna be, how hard to be pushing. And then with this little approach, I can just focus on my pressure. If I need to ever come back in and adjust, I can always do that. It's just a big old shape. And then I'm just going a little bit long with everything. I can just zoom in and the longer they go the less you have to zoom in which I personally like a lot so I'm just selecting I'm coming over to my shape builder I am just getting rid of any of the extras and then I can move on and everything is nice and clean shift B you will be using shift B in some of your shortcuts the only one I use probably the most frequently is going to be a, the the shift B is just the blob brush itself I'm just gonna go along with that one the eraser tool is still our shift E I'm just going through some of the ones that I'm gonna be thinking about and luckily for you guys you won't have to learn shape builder on my channel because my hands are too dainty and I can't reach it that's a little personal right so it has passed my reachability for the the shortcut manly over here nice and skinny let's just come up back through the top so we're almost moving into I didn't even think and I just kept on going so you'll kind of see that I'll just go pretty straightforward with inking 
just getting down most of those lines. This is, again, almost identical to what we are doing with all of our other tutorials. Let's just finish up those eyeballs and then we can come back through and clean stuff up. But yeah, this is gonna feel very, very similar if you've gone through any of the tutorials. Shift X. Now for those eyebrows, I'm just gonna click on N. N is the pencil. And I just like that I can close. I can close, let's just select both of those. And then I'm gonna click on I, I is our eyedropper. Come back to Shift B. All right, let's clean some stuff up. Now my tolerance for cleaning is probably much, much greater than yours. For the tutorials, I'll come back through and we'll actually clean these up as we're going because I know that you guys like that. But for personal preference, like I'll let this thing go through the ugly phase a very long time before I feel the need to come back through and clean stuff. So again, I'm just using my shape builder. I'm holding down my alt option. Notice that it is deleting. The longer you go, the easier this becomes. I will also notice, and we'll also do some uh, eraser tool with this as well. But I always kind of just click off and then just double check you don't have any little random tiny ones. So the closer you try and make it, the harder that tool actually gets. And then the more you're just gonna bounce over to the eraser tool. So I am just doing some crisscrosses. Just come on through nice and big, nice and smooth. Let Illustrator do all of the hard stuff for you. Let's do the hand and then we'll come back through and clean it up. So notice that that smoothing. Again, personal preference. I'm gonna probably just say have it up, but you're gonna notice that I can just slap down lines pretty quickly and it's gonna it's gonna smooth it out pretty nicely for us. So we don't have to really worry too much about where those lines are gonna go since it's gonna be pretty darn close. If I actually zoomed in and showed you what the tablet line would actually look like, it's pretty embarrassing. So I'm just slapping those bad boys down and Illustrator will clean it up pretty nicely for us. The only ones you really need to do the Shape Builder 4 are any of these corners. So the corners are gonna be the ones you're gonna to wanna to definitely use your Shape Builder for, but pretty much anything else, you could be using just the eraser. So I'll just kinda of go through other option, select your shape, Shift E, Shift E is your eraser, and then you're just hiding those lines within the other lines. So that's really the only thing that you're looking to do. So I can go Shift E, just erase, So we're just hiding stuff within all of our nice little lines. So that's another little option. Keep in mind some of the tablets have an eraser on the top. I don't ever use it, but if you guys are really, really into that, you could just turn over your the, the tablet pen and then use the eraser that way. Now that we have the idea, what I want you guys to just worry about is just practicing thick, thin, trying to trace along. Whenever we do tablet videos, I always feel like it is a silly tutorial video because it's just, it's literally just tracing. It feels rather silly for me to talk all the way through this. Nice and smooth. And maybe you got, I'm, it's absolutely hilarious. If you actually looked at what the actual pen line is really looking like, it is all over the place. It's really quite amusing. So we're just going around it and Again, Illustrator is going to fill it in for us. Maybe we'll get a little junky corner in there and we'll have to do some cleanup. But why I personally go through this process is one, it is crazy silly fast. Like you can be pretty haphazard with most of it. And you almost have to do no thinking. Like I'm just tracing. I don't have to really do anything at a certain point. Well, let's do those legs so you can kind of see how dumb it gets. Like I can just do big giant shapes. I can just do my crisscrossing and all of this will be filled in later. So it is pretty amusing once you actually kind of see the process that I could be just slapping those things down, getting our lines down. 
the more you do, as I'm doing all this and having too much fun when I shouldn't be, the more you do, the just the more the shape builder is a little bit more picky. So that is the only little tidbit. If you are not that comfortable with the shape builder, then I would recommend kind of just going a little bit slower and not doing so many different lines all at the same time. All right, let's just zoom in. I'm gonna grab my black arrow. I am only gonna grab some of these lines. Don't try and grab all of them at the same time. That That is a good way of just bogging down your computer. Click on Shape Builder. And again, the longer you go, the easier these become. Wait for it to highlight is another little tidbit with that Shape Builder. Other little thing to point out, especially as we are inking, is the more you ink somebody else's, the more confusing this is. So as soon as this becomes your drawing, like you already know what's in front, what's supposed to go behind. So if there's any question on, hey, what, you know, these lines might be very confusing to you. So once you actually start inking your own comics or your own stuff, like you already have the rough draft in front of you, you already know, hey, this is all gonna go in front, that's gonna go behind. So it is a, a much faster process once you kind of have an idea on your own drawing and your, your own approach to everything. I think all of that looks pretty good. I want to get rid of that little guy. And nothing is permanent either. As we're going through this, you can edit this at any point. If I say, hey, some of this stuff looks a little bit long, I can always come in and just use my eraser tool, just clean it up. I want this one to go behind. I can use my eraser tool. So if you find that the shape builder is a little bit too bogged down, just use your eraser tool. The eraser is really, really nice with the tablet. So it literally feels the exact same as your paintbrush. All right, let's do a little last second boogie check before we move on to the next step. So everything looks pretty good for our initial phase. Let's go file save. We are gonna move on to our shading as well as our coloring. All right, so we are just gonna take our pencil tool. The shortcut for that is N. And I just wanna go nice and long. Notice that I don't have a fill and I don't have a stroke with any of these. And all I am looking to do is build up a border. Some of you are already gonna know where I'm going. So this is just a border. So when we do our live paints, that I can do everything on the fly. So I'm just doing some nice smooth little lines. This could be pretty haphazard. So I'm just using my space bar to just kind of move from one to another. And I'm just giving myself a little bit of a gap in a space where my paint bucket will fill in any of the shadows. And this will get a little bit harder to see over here. Just anywhere. I'm just kind of slapping down some shapes. Let's give a little bit of a one right there. Let's do one right there and then we'll do our control zero. All right, let's do this. So I'm gonna go control A and control A is obviously just select all. And now if I'm gonna do our live paint bucket, shortcut is Control Alt X, but we can also come up to the top. So I'm just coming down to live paint, make, click on K. K is our live paints, or just that's just the live paint bucket. And you're gonna notice that everything we just drew just gives a nice little border. And you can obviously zoom in when you do any of this. So this will just be our shadows. I'm just zipping through. The more I didn't connect, the easier this process is. So the more I was just kind of doing loops, you might have noticed that I wasn't trying to connect anything. The more they're open, the more they'll just flow right into each other. All right, good. I'm gonna just move over to kind of a, our base blue. Let's just color in our base. Let's do our off-white for all of the teeth. I'm just verifying that I get all these little pieces. You can control these gap settings. 
and then we'll come back through with the paintbrush and get that guy. Same thing with this one. So let's go Control Zero. Let's just use our black arrow. I want to select all of that. Let's just click on Expand. I'm going to ungroup. You pretty much just want to ungroup until you can come back through and grab your shapes. All right, so we need to do a little bit of cleanup. Knife tool. Notice that this blue is selected. And I am just going to go right on through. I am just giving myself a nice little separation. Do double check that you go all the way through those shapes. So you want to basically hide yourselves within the, the stroke itself. Now I can come back. Notice that there's a nice little edge. Also notice that it is just coming in grabbing the nail. All right, good. So I want to grab anything on this left hand side. I think I want it to be a little bit darker. So I just want those to go up one. And then there are two little spaces. There's one right underneath the nostril. And then there's this little guy. Let's make those a little bit darker as well. All right, now we're having some fun. I am using my magic wand. I'm gonna select all of that light blue and let's just double click. Let's drop that tolerance down to one since we have so many blues. So I'm just grabbing those blues. I'm just double checking that none of the hand, these legs are selected. I am gonna come into my appearance. Let's just grab that fill. And then I want to drop down to where it says effect. I'm gonna drop down to where it says stylize. Let's just do a little bit of an inner glow. Let's click on our swatches. And notice that I have normal. Normal is actually probably a really nice one to do. So notice that my default, and I usually do this pretty deliberately, is normal. Then I have opacity all the way up. So then I can just mess around with the size of different things. If everything has like a, an effect or a mode, it's really hard to see what it's actually doing. So I'm just kind of seeing if it's hitting where I want. That 0.3 I think is going to be pretty good. Now that I know where the size is, notice that this is where it's hitting. Now I might drop that down to 75%. Let's just double check. Nice little subtle. Click on OK. All right, so what we're going to do is I want to come on over. I'm doing my blob brush again. I'm going to use my bracket keys and I might just go up to five. Let's come in and grab our lightest blue. Notice that nothing is selected, by the way. That will affect it, so we don't want it to merge in with anything else. And then all we are going to do is we are going to start popping in some little highlights. So just wherever you think it would hit. And we are going to come back through with our feather. So this is going to actually blend out pretty pretty well all right for the sake of argument let's just grab all those and show you the next step so you can keep on going you can go as crazy as you want I am just gonna come up to the top let's go effect I want to stylize and then I want to feather those out I'm gonna say 0.3 let's just stay 0.3 so they'll really really drop down they'll be a lot more subtle than they were and if you ever wanted those to pop out more Let's see if we can still grab them. So if you want these to pop out more, you can always come in and say, hey, I want these to be white for the blue. All right, so let's just lock out that layer. I am gonna do this. Let's just go file, save. We are good to go. Let's do a little digital high five. I will be pumping out more tablet ones since we had so many requests. And the more you do, the more comfortable you're gonna get. So if this is your very first one with the tablet, it gets more and more comfortable as you go. It is a little bit of a process, and I definitely recommend just practicing. So with that said, thanks for hanging out, and I will see you guys on the next tutorial.